Okay, so this video is for the Minister of Children and Family Development. I don't know who that is, because since this government's been in Parliament for the last 10 years, they've changed their ministers quite often. And I figure that's because, you know, they're looking to always, uh, you know, pass the buck, right? These are things that I had bought for my grandson, you know, with or without his mom, you know. I bought these when she was with, when he was with her, and she was doing really well. Plus, I continued to buy them when I was making plans for him to be in my care until she got better, right? So, you know, all his toys are still here. You know, most of his clothes are here, minus what we took, which wasn't very much, because, again, it's not something we've been through before. And those women, when we dropped them off at that office, you know, it was the sickest thing I had ever seen. They acted like it was like a, a free-for-all, you know? They were definitely relishing the idea of having free stuff dropped off into their office. All those sleepers that I had bought him as he was growing, you know, they were brand new. I bought them for him. Not those cowardly women that sat up behind closed doors and, you know, had to take a child from my home that has been truly loved by his whole family. Here's the drum he was banging on in the summertime when I did my park event and when I did the event outside of uh, the health food store. He loved that drum. He also loved the drums. This drum set. The social workers knew that uh, this was here. But none of that meant anything to him, to them. You know? I don't know why they think they can just come in here and treat me like I'm insignificant and that my children are insignificant. Hold on a minute. This little lawnmower was one of his favorite toys. He liked to run around the house with that, just beam around. This I bought when he was with me. I had these when, you know, obviously my kids were young. But I found another one that was, you know, fairly reasonably priced. And I got that for him, too. And then, of course, this little program here, this little reading program, you know, I've had this for a long time, but obviously it's not something that uh, we'll be able to do with him anytime soon. Because, you know, these women that have him, these robots, these subhumans of humanity, I mean, I've never seen so much groveling over a bag of clothes being dropped off in some Ministry of Children and Family Development office as those women drooling. Like, it's cruel. It's worse than going to a flea market with a bunch of people pushing past you to get to the best deal, you know? And then when you get there and they, somebody wants a dollar, you know, they're too damn cheap to pay a dollar. And they say, no, no, you know, we just want to pay 25 cents. Give it to us for free. Hold on. So you see, his toys are still here where he left them. There's his little people. All right, he's got little people in the bus. I don't know, you can't really see them, but they're there. All right. Well, his toys are still here. I wipe them down, I keep the dust off. No. He used to play in here every day. Every day he would play. You know? Every day he would play when his mom had him because he was always upstairs. He lived most of his life upstairs. I've been cleaning up after him since he's been born. His organ is still here. 
Nobody plays it, though. Right? He's not here to play it. Instead, what's happening on what family day, family weekend? It's all it's a long long weekend because Christy Clark, you know, brought in some stupid idea of a family day. There's no family day in British Columbia, Canada. The only family day you have are foster care parents looking after, you know, children that's been ripped from their families. So they can run around with their SUVs promoting tourism about what a great place BC is supposed to be to live in. For everything I have done for British Columbia, Canada, this government, your government, Minister of uh, Children and Family Development, has done nothing but try and destroy my family. In 2003, you tried to destroy my family. You know, 2008, you tried to destroy my family with your release of rental caps. 2003 up until 2007, you tried to destroy your fam my family when you imported like some sir, like some sir, surrogate, some, some foster child into my lap and you never bothered to pay me. You crowded me into a shanty shack with her and her crazy mother as your social workers, you know, came around once in a blue moon and then told me that when I moved out to leave the little girl to sleep downstairs by herself with the fucking rats, right? And they'd come sneaking around outside to catch the mom leaving her by herself. And I said, no, I'll sleep on the floor until you people come and make sure that this little girl has a place to sleep before I leave this stupid hellhole you put me in. After you kicked me out of my house in 2003. Because you had some point to prove about families. There is no family day in B.C. The only thing you have are grubby women waiting to put their fingers on this stuff. Oh yeah, when those social workers came into my house, after they kicked out my daughter, do the research, minister. They kicked my daughter out, knowing that she had nowhere to go, no money, no food, no shelter. What were they expecting? Hmm? Huh? For her to what? She had nowhere to go. We were the only support system. Anyway, they came into my house to make sure it was okay for the baby to stay here, right? Even though he's been living here since he's been born. And even though I've been wanting custody ever since he's been born. And I managed to get these, this Lego, or it's not really Lego, it's a, it's a mega block. But I have a, I have a bin full of Lego as well for my own kids from when they were little. And uh, I got this for 14 bucks. And uh, I had them on the couch over here in the corner because that was when I was getting those fridges moving in. So they were there. And these women, they come in here and they go, oh yeah, nice little drum set, but you got stuff piled up on the couch. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I just moved in some fridges. I had to move stuff out of the way because I live in a garage about the size of your garage. You know, this is smaller than an apartment even though it's a house. Oh, but as far as they were concerned, you know, I was just piling shit up. Let's not forget the stuff in his bedroom either. There's those dupe, those big, those big blocks, right? No, I'm washing them. Hmm? Stacking them up along the wall. You know, his bedroom is ready. Right? His stuff is still here. I'm not going to give it to those grubs, minister. They have no right to have my grandchild. Absolutely not, right, no right. Don't talk to me about family day. Whose family? Huh? Whose family are we talking about? Hmm? How are you stimulating the economy, minister? Hmm? Coming into my world all the time upsetting my children because we're poor? Hmm? Right? Taking the smallest from the small? Hmm? Out of my house? And then try and sit up in there and say, I have no right to get upset about anything? Hmm? How long do I have to wait for my grandson? Tell me. Huh? Are these women going to come in here and just start helping themselves, bringing their little fucking bags? Huh? Just start scooping the shit up? Huh? 
There's a name for those kind of people. I don't know what it is. I'm so angry right now. Hmm? You know, why the hell do I work on a nonprofit? You tell me. You tell me. What has your government ever done to me to help me? Huh? How have you helped me? So it's obvious I'm having a bad day. My little grandson should be sitting on this chair right now. He's kind of like me. He likes to line everything up, you know. He likes to be neat. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, the Minister of uh, Children and Family Development is a lady from the Punjabi community. And the little girl that I looked after for three and a half years was from India. But she was um, Tamil. So nobody cared about her. Absolutely nobody. Nobody from the Punjabi community. I went to the temples. I went there asking for help. I went to a couple of organizations that worked with these people, you know, with the, with the Punjabi community, well, the Indian, you know, from India, right? And nobody wanted to help me with the mother. And nobody wanted to help me with the child. And I looked after that little girl for three and a half years in her shanty shack with her crazy mom who liked to feed the rats and set the house. She used to play with fire in the basement. She'd, you know, start it on fire with a piece of paper and just toss it around. Hmm? You know, I'd phone social services, right? They just left a little girl with me. That's it. That's all they did. So anyway, this lady that's the Minister of Children and Family Development, I want my grandson home. From my understanding, you have a disability of some kind. I don't know what it is, but obviously it's not a mental kind because you're sitting up as a minister in some government that just keeps going around and, and, and making my life hard. You know, it's been how many years now? This little bell, this bell. You know, I used to wheels on the bus and, you know, and all these other little songs I used to do with my grandson. We used to play. You know, he'd sit here and watch the computer, and we'd listen to the songs, and we'd we'd we'd, 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 we'd ring the bells. These people that you employ, they're like, you know, grubs, eh? Oh, just bring the stuff and drop it off at the office. You know, it's like a flea market. We're looking for the best deal. Put a big smile on the face. Let's see what goodies we got. Hmm? Where's family? His family is here. Why is my grandson not home where he belongs? Hmm? I've been looking after him ever since he's been born. My girls have been looking after him ever since he's been born. Who do you think's been looking after him? Yes, the mother helped, but who do you really think's been looking after him? But it was your ministry that wouldn't give me custody when he was born. Hmm? Your social worker sat up there and said, oh, no, no, we're just going to let a drug addict have the baby. You know, with her drug addict boyfriend. And we're going to force him to move into your house so that he can fight all the time. So we can take our little fucking notes. And then we can build a little case. And we can say that, you know, the child can't live there after he gets to a certain age right before he gets too late to adopt him out. Hmm? Why is he in foster care on a family provincial freaking holiday? When his family is sitting here crying tears. And if that's not going to cause a disability in him, for a woman that has a disability, in a community that didn't look after a little girl when I needed help, I want my grandson back. I'm filing a complaint. This is my complaint. Okay, so this is the, this is the thanks I get for, uh, you know, in 1999 deciding to do a non-profit, to try and give back to my community, you know, being blessed and feeling grateful that I live in a free country, right? You know? And I get kicked out of my house in 2003, out in the fucking snow with, you know, five dependent kids. I move into a shanty shack. I find out not even within three weeks that the landlady is cuckoo, cuckoo, right? You know, and I end up, end, end up watching her little girl for three and a half years for zero dollar pay because the Ministry of Children and Family Development didn't want to pay me. Hmm? And the only way I could afford to put a roof over my head was to stay in that place, live with the crazy lady, live with the fucking rats. You know, as I tried to de-rat, they moved back in. Because she used to pile garbage up all over the place, feed them in a dish, and, you know, set things on fire. You know, I have to wash her hair, try and get rid of her lice. Wash her little girl's hair, try and get rid of the lice. I used to clean the woman's place so that I wouldn't have lice in my place. 
right? I took her to the Punjabi community because that's what's a stronghold out here in Surrey, BC, Canada. And nobody wanted to help me. And the Ministry of Children and Family, Family Development didn't want to help me with the little girl other than just put her in my lap. I gave her the top bunk while I slept on the bottom bunk with my two girls at the end of the bed, like, rolled up like this, like a fucking dog. My two slept this way, I slept this way. Well, she slept on top. And then my daughter, who was sick at that time, you know, if I was lucky, would have her on the floor. And that's how I lived for three and a half years. And then I moved into her apartment. But, you know, Liberal government took care of that, though, because, uh, you know, they got rid of the rental increase, or uh, rental cap, and everybody started getting kicked out, right, including me. I painted the courtyard, did crafts, did snacks, did all kinds of stuff with the kids, but it wasn't good enough with this kind of mentality. And then when my grandson was born, I said to the social worker, look, it's better if I have custody. Oh, no, oh, no. No, 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 we give it to the mother. We try to work with the family. Well, don't you realize that we're the family? Her and her drug-addicted boyfriend you can't consider to be a family. That's not a family. Especially when you've got the girls, the teenagers, and the mom, me, looking after the baby, keeping an eye on the baby, doing, you know, at least half of the, three-quarters of, well, you know, in the initial stages of raising the baby. What do you think I've been doing for the last 28 months, 27 months? I want my grandson back. I'm filing a complaint against the Ministry of Children and Family Development. I'm filing a complaint against the B.C. Liberal government. This is Canada we are supposed to live in. Oh, then, yes, I've been working on my nonprofit for a very, very long time. Do not try and hold me accountable for all your little fucking drug addicts out in the community, okay? Because I don't encourage that shit. The only people that encourage that shit are the people that profiteer off of it, that can get gainful employment, which never changes anything. All it does is set up the vulnerable kids. To have, I don't know what these women are, but when you go like, oh, look what I got. Oh, just just bring his stuff to us. We're going to take the child like we live in modern day slavery. You know, we're going to use our daycares as a shield to trick the teenagers, you know. And then we're going to just ask you to bring all this stuff to the office so we can pick through it and pick what we want. Just a bunch of fucking garbage pickers. Huh? And you want to call me a garbage picker? All my grandson's stuff is in this house where it belongs except my grandson. And his sleepers. And a few little clothes and a pair of boots. These people make good money. These foster... They're not parents. These foster kidnappers. They are not a family to Andre. We are the family to Andre. And I want him back. I can't wait for my daughter to get her freaking shit together, especially when your ministry throws her out into the street to be murdered. No food, no clothes, no shelter, no money. And all because you want to teach her a lesson so you can trick the family, come in here and steal my grandson, and then ask for his belongings so you can pick through it. You have a disability. And it's much more bigger than in your personal body. It's within your government. I want my grandson back. This is not fair. I live in Canada. I don't live in India. I don't live in some world, third world freaking country. I don't live in Sudan with the... uh. Iranians trying to overtake the Africans. I don't live in China with a communist freaking country that doesn't want people to have religion and they take them and they put them in jail and they harvest their organs. I live in Canada. That's where I live. My grandson was born in Canada. He has a family who loves him.
What part of that 